Wagwan, everyone, and welcome to Mr. This is the Caribbean, and here's Jamaica. Now let's Jamaica our way through its story, shall we? The third largest Caribbean island. Jamaica chilled alone in the cheerful sun for many years until its first inhabitants alighted on its sandy shores, though no one's exactly sure when this was, but at least 3,000 years ago. Those mysterious first arrivals were followed by similarly mysterious second arrivals, noted for their redware pottery. And then, around the year 800, the Taino people made the island home, cultivators of cassava and corn, who abode in villages of wood, palm leaves, leaves and straw. The island was spotted by Christopher Columbus in 1494, and he declared it the fairest isle that eyes have beheld. If only the ensuing years in Jamaica were as sightly as its scenery. The Spanish took control and treated the Taino harshly in their insatiable search for riches. Forced labor and introduced disease decimated native numbers to the extent that Spain began importing fresh slaves from Africa. Enslaved persons who escaped their masters fled to the mountains and became known as the Maroons, a small beacon of liberty in an island of chains. Skipping ahead to the mid-17th century, we find Jamaica lumbering along with a population of only a few thousand, which made it easy pickings for the British, who snatched it from Spain in 1655. The British defended their prize, and Port Royal became a sort of rum-swilling pirate paradise for a while, Britain encouraging piratical pillaging of Spanish ports. After Spain formally recognized Britain's occupation of Jamaica, the British didn't need the pirates anymore and set about executing them again. Britain made a lot of money from Jamaica after importing many more African slaves to toil on plantations of indigo, cacao, and most profitably, sugarcane. British forces also ended up engaged in fierce fighting with the Maroons in the island's interior, who scored several successes under leaders like Queen Nani with their proficient usage of guerrilla warfare. Another slave revolt followed, and on its heels, another war with the Maroons. Just in case it all wasn't clear enough, there was another slave revolt in 1831, led by Baptist preacher Samuel Sharp. Though unsuccessful, this was the age of the abolitionists, and freedom was in the air. And in 1834, slavery was finally ended across the British Empire. Unfortunately, life for the average Jamaican didn't get much better, and it was in protest over poor conditions and injustice that another Baptist preacher, Paul Bogle, arose to lead the Morant Bay Rebellion in 1865, which was viciously suppressed by Governor Edward John Eyre, who ordered Bogle's execution for high treason. But Jamaicans didn't stop in their efforts to improve their lot. Pan-Africanist, writer and activist Marcus Garvey galvanized crowds with his ambitious proposals. He would later inspire several figures in the American civil rights movement. 1962 saw Jamaica achieve independence whilst remaining part of the British Commonwealth. Economic growth followed, then slumped in the latter 1970s before picking up in the 90s, and today the country has attained a high level of human development. And I think we can all agree there's something special about Jamaica. It stands out, and everyone loves it, and its influence on the world has been incredible. From Rastafari to Rocksteady to reggae music, immortalized by the great Bob Marley, to phenomenal athletes including the fastest runners in the world. So that's it for Jamaica, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye